Hey everyone, welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. Finally, I got my voice mostly back. There might still be a cut or two from time to time because I'm still coughing a little bit, but for the most part I feel 10 times better. I sound 10 times better and I can breathe 10 times better, which is really, really nice. So thank you all for being so patient with me. Um, I have a lot of stuff I want to go over before we get into like current comics. Um, I mainly I'm going to do them in two episodes. So in this episode, we're going to go through Savage Avengers, uh, one, well, actually the free comic book day issue, and then one through five. This does have some Venom stuff in it, but not a lot. So this might not be a, a totally long video or anything like that. I do have some stuff to say about this, um, but, you know, it might not be too long because there's not a lot of Venom stuff in it, which was surprising because I thought we were going to get some more. And Venom does show up, but actually the creature we see in the, you know, the jar and stuff in the tube, it turned out to not be Venom. And that was intriguing on one level but also there's so many unanswered things so the reason why i want to do this episode is so we can briefly talk about this because i'm sure jerry duggan is going to come back to this later on and kind of follow up with uh you know with the villain of this storyline and then also with what's going on with the symbiote and everything so hopefully we'll learn more about it uh soon so we're going to do that in this episode the next episode we're going to talk about uh silver surfer black because that features null in it and it's probably the most we've gotten of null in one book because obviously in the first six issues of Venom that Donny Cates wrote there was some Null stuff in there but most of it was you know transferred through the Grendel or it was stuff that you know Venom was seeing in his mind or stuff like that um this is actually physically Null fighting Silver Surfer so we'll talk about that next episode and then I have um a Marvel comics it's called Marvel Action Spider-Man and it introduces uh, introduces a new take on Venom so we'll do that in the third episode that I'm going to record today. But as far as Lethal Protectors number three and Venom number 19, I'm going to wait on those until Wednesday. I have Wednesday off and I think there's a Weapon Plus uh, Absolute Carnage tie-in coming in. So once I get that one, I'll do a video of all three of those single issues and we'll do all that on Wednesday. So we're going to try to play catch up now. Um, and the main thing we got to catch up on is stuff that Venom's been in or Null or, you know, other characters have been in. I'm trying to get them all done before the end of this season, obviously. So we'll start here with Savage Avengers, written by Jerry Duggan, art by Mike Diodato uh, Jr. The art's fantastic. And Jerry, I really like Jerry's writing. Uh, he did a lot of stuff with characters that I normally don't like, like Deadpool and stuff. And he'll, like, you know, put a spin on those characters that I'm like, oh... I like this. This is kind of fun. Rick Remender was pretty good at that with Deadpool as well. I liked Rick Remender's version of Deadpool where he just wasn't all jokey. Whereas Jerry Duggan, it, there was jokes, but there was also some heart there too. And I, I don't know, that kind of stuff makes me like characters more. I'm getting older. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, ah, the jokes don't do it enough for me anymore. I need a little bit more. Um, so in this, in Savage Avengers, what Jerry was doing, because they set up Conan, the barbarian, returning to the Marvel Universe um, from Samaria, you know, that's like his like world that he's from, and uh, he's come in, he's, you know, talking about Krom, who is like this deity god type that kind of sits on a mountain, when he breathes, that's like, that's like your life starts, and then when he, I guess when he decides, you know, to, when he breathes his last breath on you, that means that's your day to die. And uh, so it's like this really mystical kind of thing. I really like the Conan uh, universe. It's really awesome. A lot of the artwork and the older stuff was really fantastic. So it's cool that they brought him in and they made him a part of like a Savage Avengers team, especially with these characters. We have Wolverine, who's on the team, uh, Elektra, Punisher, uh, Brother Voodoo, and Venom. Now, I will say the Venom stuff was probably the weakest in this. And that was really frustrating as a Venom fan and as someone who, you know, <laughs> hosts this show about Venom. It was a little frustrating to see how little Venom was in this because I thought, you know, this was taking place during the time that uh, Eddie Brock and his symbiote separated, uh, you know, right before Absolute Carnage. So that's kind of when this takes place. So I was like, OK, so this is Venom without Eddie Brock. Somehow he got put in a, a jar or a tube and he's going to be used for some ritual with this bad guy that, you know, that pops up. And this wizard, I guess he's the Sorcerer Supreme of his time period. He's now in our time period, like present day. Um, I guess he came from the past. And they have, they're in this place called the City of Sickles. And they're basically finding all these very artistic and passionate people. They start off with this like opera singer who has a connection to Wolverine. Uh, he was a guy who like once gave mutants refuge, you know, um, at one point. And so Wolverine knew him and, and trusted him. And so this guy gets taken and they kill him and they spill his blood in this giant pool of blood that you can see there. And that's basically what that is. They need to fill up the pool because there's another planet past Pluto that's just on the cusp of our solar system that lines up with our planes. One of those stories where it lines up with our planet 
And when it does, they're able to summon a demon, but only if there's enough blood to like fulfill that demon um, and, and you know quench its thirst or whatever. And so uh, that's what they're doing. That's what these villains are doing. And they're using the hand, you know, the ninja group from Daredevil and stuff, they're using them to, you know, kind of uh, act as their pawns to lure these heroes because they need a certain amount of uh, heroes uh, and their blood to, you know, activate this ritual as well. So obviously Wolverine, Conan, Brother Voodoo, they need some of these people. Um, they, they need Frank Castle. And the way they get him is probably the stupidest way to lure Frank Castle. They dig up his family's dead bodies and they bring them to the pit. And that causes uh, Frank Castle to go after them. So they get exactly what they wanted. They wanted Frank to, you know, go after them. But, I mean, come on. He went with, with blood in his eyes. <laughs> he went with guns blazing. Um and then, you know, there's some good stuff in this run. It's like, you know, Wolverine versus Conan. Conan, like, stabs Wolverine in the head. And uh, Wolverine's like, yeah, who's Krom? F Krom and F you, dude. And he's like, uh, your sword's not going to cut through my metal bones. And the two of them go at it. And it's it's pretty fun. It's it's a great story overall. Like I said, there's this ritual that's being, um, you know, that's happening. And they're trying to summon this demon. And the demon kind of looks like a venom. Like, it looks like a symbiote. Uh, it's actually this right here. I think it's called Watoon or something like that. And uh, it's just like this giant, you know, 20 foot demon monster with teeth, no eyes, bones sticking out of its head, kind of looks a little symbiotic. And so what we learn is that there's this jar that has a symbiote in it. It, it appears first in Savage Avengers um, number one, and then also in the free comic day issue. Um, but it also has like a, it also appears throughout the book. And we find out that that jar is actually a symbiote that's been around for a millennia. Apparently, these guys have been holding on to the symbiote for a very long time. And so Venom shows up because he sensed the symbiote. And uh, he that's how he gets involved. So at first I was like, oh, Venom's in a jar. They're going to use him for a ritual. Then the jar breaks and the symbiote leaves the jar and it bonds with um, with Conan, the barbarian. Uh, so I guess that means Conan has a codex now. Uh, so Conan is able to reforge his sword out of the symbiote and the symbiote goes into his chest to heal him because he dies he almost dies from a, a chest wound there's like a hole gets punched right through him so the symbiote from the jar not venom but the symbiote from the jar goes into him bonds with him uses its last of its life to try to heal him uh, and then helps him create the sword so the two of them are now merged together and they're going around fighting and of course while that's happening the bad guys get enough blood and they awaken the god um so they are able to get the marrow god and that's why there's bones sticking out of him his name is uh yatun lao uh, is is the name of the god. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, so then, of course, the heroes have to spend a whole issue or two fighting the giant demon thing, but they're also trying to get back at the sorcerer. Uh, Frank Castle takes a couple shots at him, can't kill him, uh, and then the sorcerer puts like a little spell on Frank and tries to change his memories of when his family died and to in order to stop him. So Frank sees himself hiding behind his wife when they're getting shot at, and of course. Frank, that's not what happened. And Frank's like, yeah, that didn't happen. I didn't hide behind my wife. I tried to save them. But, you know, uh, the sorcerer tried to change his memories. And by doing that, it altered Frank. And so he wasn't able to, like, you know, go in for the kill shot. So uh, that's all. It, it kind of slowed him down. And then he saw ghosts of his family and Brother Voodoo had to come in and, like, wipe the spell off him and stuff. So it's pretty neat stuff. They, they do some cool things. But, of course, uh, you know, if you want to see these guys, they, they, as far as Savage Avengers go, they do tear through a bunch of hand ninjas and other sorcerers. Not the main guy. He kind of gets away still, and I think that's why they're going to set him up for a return. And then these characters are probably going to all reunite because they all kind of break away at the end. Uh, but when Venom, he shows up here because he's like, hey, I sensed another symbiote, a very old one, and that's what is bonded with you know, uh, Conan the Barbarian, but it's dying. And the, the downside is, is like, as a Venom fan, I, I'm so fascinated by that. I'm like, well, what is this symbiote? I want to learn more about it. Um, you know, why is it dying? You know, what's going on with it? They don't touch on any of that. And that's like kind of my one major critique, uh, negative critique about this book is that the Venom stuff just feels thrown in and it doesn't feel like organic to the story. And that's a bummer. Like I was like, oh, I wanted to learn more about this other symbiote and why it's, you know, uh, where it is, where, you know, where it came from, how it got to Earth. Um, what is it a part of like, you know, uh, the, the Grendel, you know, or something like that? Like, what, what, is, what is this thing? And I'm sure we'll find out at some point, but it, it was a bummer not to get it in this one because it dies in this issue, in issue five here. Um, it actually dies. And uh, that's that's a real bummer too because I'm like, oh, we haven't really learned anything about it. Uh, and the way they, like, Brother Voodoo has to cast a spell because Conan, you know, the symbiote isn't strong enough to fully heal Conan from a hole in the chest. So it does what it can and then it dies. And then Conan is now left dying. So Brother Voodoo comes in 
and uh, casts a spell that puts a, a scar on his body, on his soul, which is he takes the soul of a hand member and gives it to Conan so that Conan can, you know, live again. And by doing that, he's disrupted, you know, the life and balance of, you know, death and life and everything. So that's probably going to come back and bite Brother Voodoo at some point in the butt, too. Um, but there's some great action in it. Venom comes in and starts tearing stuff apart. There's a scene where Venom gets grabbed by Yatun and he's being held. But then, like, but he can't slink away. And I'm like, well, Eddie Brock isn't in the suit, right? So how how can he not just liquefy and slip out of the creature's hands because when he gets freed he goes ah i'm free and i'm like which you know kind of bad dialogue there but i'm like oh like is this eddie or not it's too ambiguous uh because i'm like well if he's held you know he and he's just li he's just the symbiote he would just liquefy away so i guess eddie's in the suit you know in this one but they don't really reference eddie and no one calls him eddie and wolverine doesn't call him eddie and when Venom shows up, he does look at Wolverine. He's like, oh, Wolverine, gross. So there is some acknowledgement there. Like, oh, I know who you are and stuff. But that's it. Like, they're, they're, they don't do much with it. And so, like I said, the Venom stuff felt very tacked on. It almost felt like, oh, we came up with a design for a demon named Watoon that kind of resembles a symbiote. And we're going to have this ancient symbiote. So we got to involve Venom. But that's that feels like the extent of the amount of work that went into bringing Venom into the story. So if you're a Venom fan... I would say you probably won't get much out of the story. I certainly didn't as far as Venom goes. But the story itself I really liked and I'm intrigued and I'm still buying the series. I think issue seven's coming out soon. They just did an annual recently too. Um, but the, the characters they use in this are great. And I love at the end of this Conan and Punisher go off and they go off on their own little side adventure kind of. And Punisher is kind of intrigued to learn more about Krom and, you know, kind of has a death wish now. Um, and he's like, and, and Conan's helping him bring his family back to be reburied and stuff. And so there's like a bonding moment between the two of them, two warriors. And I like that a lot. So I, I like what Jerry Duggan's doing overall with these characters, but the Venom stuff, I hope gets a bigger focus in future storylines. Uh, Cause like I said, there's not much to say. I mean, if you think I missed anything regarding a symbiote in this five, in these five or six issues, you're mistaken. I didn't miss a single step. That's all there is in this book regarding Venom in any way. So, um, you know, I'm excited to see where this goes. I hope they, you know, they kill the demon at the end, obviously, but the sorcerer gets away. Brother Voodoo now has a scar on him. Uh, the heroes all know kind of what the mission is. They know they got to stop the sorcerer. So they're all going back. A lot of them are going back to New York to like continue the search there. Uh, Electra has to go. I love how Electra showed up in this. She, it was really awesome the way they brought her in. And uh, she's kicking a lot of butt on the team. She kills a lot of ninjas in this one too. Um, so I'm excited to see what they do with her. She's going to go now talk to Dr. Strange and bring him into the battle. Brother Voodoo went off ahead on his own and he sent everyone else back to New York. And like I said, Punisher and uh, Conan, they go off to rebury, you know, Frank's family. And then they're going to get involved again too. So there's a lot going on in this series. I can't wait to see where Jerry Duggan goes with it. But as far as Venom stuff goes, I would say if you have to have everything Venom, Sure, pick it up, but I don't think you're going to get much out of it. But maybe that's just because it's a teaser and we'll get more payoff from it later. But I certainly want to know who that ancient symbiote is. And I hope they do in a whole issue where they show a flashback of that character and we get to know a little bit more about them. Because they even die off panel in this. That was a really frustrating thing was they didn't just die in this book. They died and you didn't see it. It was just like, oh, so like I think Venom goes, yeah, I felt the symbiote give its last breath. And you're just like, that's it? Like, we don't get to see it? It just gave its last breath and Venom said it off, you know, and it's happened off panel. So that was a little bit of a bummer. I, I wish that would have was done a little bit better, but otherwise it's a pretty solid read, especially if you like these other characters, you know, Punisher and, and Brother Voodoo and those guys, which I do. So I like the book for that. Uh, but for Venom stuff, it's skippable. And uh, throughout this episode, I had all the digital codes. I think one of them, I could like the, the sticker ripped and I had a problem with that with Silver Surfer too. I think that month, sometimes uh, Marvel, when they ship their stuff, their stickers, like when you're trying to peel them off, they rip completely and you can't get the digital code. So I think only four digital codes pop up through this episode um so i'm sorry i couldn't get all five of them up i just couldn't read the last one uh so i apologize for that uh, but uh, also in silver surfer when we do that in the next episode we're gonna have four digital codes pop up not all five unfortunately because again the stickers were like got stuck or ripped or something and uh, i hate that it happens every once in a while but you know i'll still give out whatever codes i do have in that uh, episode so let me know what you think have you read savage avengers I, if so i'd love to hear your thoughts down below what do you think of the venom stuff and what do you think of like all the other characters because to me the other characters they they were the strongest and best part. The Venom stuff to me felt the weakest. And so for that reason, uh, you know, I, I'm not like 100% on board with this as far as a Venom 
book goes. I almost wish he was off the team and they just focused on these guys, but hopefully they'll make up for that in the next arc whenever they bring Venom back. So let me know your thoughts down below, and as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. And thanks for being so patient with me. We'll have more episodes coming up. I'm going to record them right now, and we'll get those to you guys very, very soon. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.